Hey Wargamers, welcome back to the channel, Death From Above Wargaming. I'm Aaron and I am back with an exciting multi-part tutorial on how to play Battletech Override. Uh, so we've gotten a lot of questions about the system, uh, both on Discord, in email, on Patreon, asking you know, if we could do a series on how to play this game. Uh, this series is going to be six parts. Uh, I did that so that I could release the content in digestible chunks versus one giant video that you would have to sift through. Um, in this part, we're going to do just a brief discussion on, on what it is, what is Battletech Override, and we're going to dig into the anatomy of the record sheet and what's on there. Um, parts two, three, and four will focus on various phases of the game from initiative all the way through to the end phase. Um, part five will be about force building and some of the tools that we use and the strike operation system um, to build forces. And then part six will be basically a walkthrough battle report uh, of us playing the game and talking uh, more in depth about the rules and the things that are happening mechanically. Um, so that will be uh, the series of videos, this tutorial series on how to play Battletech Override. So again, what is Battletech Override? Uh, it, it really is a, a catalyst-inspired house rule system. And the, the philosophy of this system is really use as much written rule as we can. All we really did was fill in some of the blank spaces, we connected some of the dots, and we grafted together a lot of the rules from Alpha Strike, um, specifically movement, um, and some of the things from Classic with that combat system found in MechWarrior Destiny, which actually is fantastic. It's like a hidden gem in that, in that book. Um, so what do you really need to play? Primarily, you need MechWarrior Destiny. This is where you know 80% of it comes from. Um, if you're familiar with Alpha Strike, there's the quick reference you can get. Um, most of us are familiar with Classic or played it in some form. Um, and if not, don't worry. Again, most of it can be found in Mech Warrior Destiny. Um, so if you don't have that book, it might be good to get your hands on it. I think I think there's a lot of good stuff actually in that book. Even the RPG system is a lot of fun. So the game is played in what we call a one-to-one -one scale. And by that I mean it's played on a 3D gaming surface like Alpha Strike. It's not played on a hex mat, although you can play on hexes if you want. Um, and it's in that, that same hex scale where one hex equals one inch, right? That's what we call one to one. One hex is one inch. Alpha Strike is played at two to one. Classic is played, again, primarily on hexes. If you're playing the miniatures rules, that's one to one. That's the scale of Battletech Override. Um, it is a game that's focused on battle mechs, as Battletech is primarily about the battle mechs, but it does have a heavy emphasis on integrating combined arms, vehicles, infantry, VTOLs, battle armor, it's all there, transports, all the good stuff uh, is there. Very similar to Alpha Strike in that regard. It makes it easy to play with. Um, you can balance your forces using battle value since it is, I think, closer on the classic end of the spectrum in terms of the complexity of units. Um, so I would, I would advise using battle value over PV, um, but, it was built around something we call strike operations, which is a homebrewed system, which is, you know, there's battle value behind the scenes and the math there, but really it's like a pick off the shelf method. It's designed for narrative, get into the, sort of the action quickly. Um, and again, we'll talk about that in, a, in another video. Um, so there are five phases to the game, initiative, movement, combat, heat, and end. This should be very familiar to anybody that has played Battletech. If you haven't played Battletech before, Again, we're going to have deep dive videos into each of these phases uh, and we'll walk through them in detail uh, so that you can basically understand exactly what you need to do when you're playing this game. Um, so let's talk about each of those phases at a high level just for your benefit. So in initiative, uh, you can do one of three things. One, you can play it the way you've played it in classic, right? We roll initiative. Um, if I lose, I have to basically go first. I pick a unit, you pick a unit, I pick a unit. You pick, that, that's one way you can do it. That's an optional sort of way to do initiative. The other optional way, the fast method is the alpha strike method where we roll initiative. If I lose, I have to move everything. Then you move everything. Then we go to the next phase. That's perfectly fine too. Um, 
But we've created a cinematic style of initiative, which is inspired um, by rules and destiny, but also um, the Harebrained Schemes Battletech game, where sort of the lighter, faster units have a little bit more of a benefit. Um, and that is basically a bracketed initiative system that uses the, the TMM. We'll talk about all of that uh, again in the deep dive video. Um, but basically, faster units get uh, a little bit of, of a benefit there, so they can react later in the phase um, versus slower units. Um, the movement phase works very much like it does in Alpha Strike. Um, there are some additional rules uh, and inspirations from Classic um, that accommodate things like falling down and crawling. Um, you know, unlike Alpha Strike, there are, um, we'll talk about this in just a minute, there's piloting and gunnery, not just a single skill, so you can fall over. Um, you know, there's physical attacks, you can DFA people, all these great things, right? Okay, so combat. This is really where now the, the nuts and bolts of the MechWarrior Destiny combat system come in. Um, there are, um, th there's a lot there, so I'm not going to start to unpack it, but basically it has the granularity of classic in terms of tracking every single weapon that a unit has, but it groups them into target interlock circuits. So basically groups, you can group your weapons and fire weapons groups instead of every single individual weapon. Um, so it makes it go a little bit quicker. There's also, I think, improved mechanics around missile clusters and LBX and you know rapid fire weapons and things like that um, that make it very, very exciting and fast paced, um, but still capture that flavor of, of classic battle tech. Um, the heat phase, it's very simple. It's right from MechWarrior Destiny. It features a six-point scale, zero through five, um, instead of the zero through 30 from Classic or just the zero to three um, or zero to shutdown, really, from, from Alpha Strike. So it's a little bit more granularity. Um, there's ammo explosions and things like that, so it's kind of fun. Um, and then the end phase is generally um, adapted from, you know, it's basically the same in every Battletech system. Although we do have, um, we've hardwired rules in for morale and forced withdrawal in, in all the other systems that tends to be optional. So we have, um, we've built out some house rules and things to harden that. Um, and, I, and I think that makes it a lot more fun. All right, so that's basically the high level of each phase. Um, again, there's gonna be three videos that dive into the phases um, and you know really get into the, to the detail. We'll walk through the rules. Um, step by step in those. All right, so let's talk about the card, shall we? Let's take a look at let's take a look at a card. Let me bring one up here on the screen. All right, so so this is the rifleman. I'll move my face out of the way when we need to look in that bottom <laughs> that bottom left hand corner. Of this rifleman, but uh, let's talk through the anatomy of a BattleTech override card. So it uh, it it. It basically looks similar to what you might see in MechWarrior Destiny if you do have that book, um, but there's a lot of additional things here to kind of transform it from a role-playing game into a tabletop war game. Um, so let's start with the piloting and gunnery. So I mentioned this before. Um, Alpha Strike, it's just skill. Classic, it's piloting gunnery. Right here, it's piloting gunnery. Right, That helps to differentiate the pilots and give them a little bit more personality. Um, for those of you that are unfamiliar with Battletech, lower is better. So the lower your score, if you have a gunnery zero, you're phenomenal. All right. If you're piloting eight, you stink. Um, you really want a lower score in either of those skill categories. Gunnery is obviously used to shoot, and piloting is used to maintain control of your mech or your vehicle or whatever you um, happen to be piloting at the time. All right. So the next thing um, here on this uh, on this sheet, the next thing down is type. So there are, you know, there, there's vehicles, um, and I'm back on the left-hand side here. So there's vehicles, there's infantry. There's also, this is battle mech. This is battle mech. Primarily, we're going to be talking about battle mechs throughout this tutorial. Um, a lot of the a lot of the concepts apply across the board, um, but again, just focused on battle mechs here for now to keep it simple. Um, the mass is how big it is, how many tons it is. Um, that that determines if it's a light, medium, heavy, or an assault mech. Um, so anything up to 35 tons is a light mech. Anything up from there to 55 tons is a medium mech, from 60 to 75 is heavy, and then 80 and above is an assault mech. All right, so below that is movement. Um, so on the rifleman, you'll see it says four slash six. Um, so that four is how many inches it can move when it's walking. 
Um, six is how many inches it can move when it's sprinting. Some mechs will have a third value. It'll say like slash 4J, and that means how many inches it can jump. Some mechs are equipped with powerful uh, like boosters. They can jump through the air and things like that. Um, again, for those of you that are unfamiliar. Um, so that's what that represents. Now, TMM, what does that stand for? So that's Target Movement Modifier. If you've played Alpha Strike, you're familiar with this concept. This is basically how hard the mech is to hit based on how fast it can go. Um, it, is, it is just derived, there's just a flat conversion from your speed to your TMM um, that to give you that base TMM value that's represented on the card. Um, it does represent overall agility as well, um, and it does factor into that cinematic style of initiative that we talked about. Um, What's important to note here is that you get your TMM, which is basically a modifier to being shot, right? <clears throat> so the higher your TMM, the better. That applies regardless of how far you moved. As long as you've moved an inch, you could move two, three, or four. In this scenario, you would always get, if you're walking, right, your base movement, you would always get your TMM of one. Um, all right. So the other thing in here, let's talk about um, just dropping down into weapons. We'll talk about heat in a little bit. So, so just suspend that for a moment, but let's drop down into the weapons um, category here. So the first thing you might notice uh, on the far right, if you are familiar to Battletech, is there are, there are five range brackets, not just three. So in classic Battletech, there's short, medium, and long. In Alpha Strike, there's short, medium, and long. There is an optional rule for extreme range. Um, in MechWarrior Destiny, there's also point-blank range, which is basically within an inch. So that's like punch distance, kick distance. That's like you are right up in their grill. Uh, <laughs> that's what that is. Again, you'll notice weapons have individualized stats, um, but they are grouped into things called ticks or target interlock circuits. So each one of those lines is a tick, which in my mind is like the pilot pulling a trigger or hitting a specific button, and all of those weapons on that tick are firing um, at once. So for example, the first tick is two autocannon fives. There's one on the left arm, one on the right arm. So the pilot pulls that trigger, boom, it's firing both of those autocannon rounds. It does four damage if it hits, right? Um, the damage and the range brackets, the modifiers and the range bracket, that all comes from Total War um, or Classic, Total Warfare or Classic Battletech values. It's all converted directly from that. Again, that's all in um, Mech Warrior Destiny. We have done some work and some math around that to harden some of those things up and make it usable on the tabletop. Um, but essentially, that that's what it is. Now, a couple of things. I want to talk about the, the range brackets for a minute. So you'll notice the, the AC5 group that I mentioned. At point blank, it's plus two. At short, it goes down to zero. At medium, it's two. Long, it's four. And X, it's a dash. That means it cannot shoot at extreme range. The weapons can't shoot that far. At long range, you're at a plus four. That's not, that's not a good thing, right? In this case, higher is, is worse because it's making the number you need to roll higher. Right, they're the most accurate at short range, zero, and at point blank range they actually get inaccurate um, because they have a minimum range uh, on these weapons. Right, so that's kind of how that works. Again, these are based on what you'd find in classic BattleTech, um, which is really the the chassis upon which Destiny and Alpha Strike were built. And so, you know, this is all based on Destiny. This is all right out of Destiny, so it normally you know would follow that um, that same logic. Now couple of notes on target interlock circuits. So this is actually a really cool mechanic. Some people love it, some people hate it, but it actually dates all the way back to the Solaris 7 box set if you're a, if you're a junkie. Um, it might even might have been referenced before that, but it's in every single Mech Warrior video game. You group weapons together, you pull the trigger, it fires a bunch of stuff. Um, we have implemented some some house rules that are that are hardwired into this system. Um, a tick cannot exceed five base points of damage. So I couldn't put the auto cannons and the large lasers all on one group and deal, you know, whatever, 10 points of damage or whatever it might be. Um, because that, number one, like from a game mechanics perspective, that's ridiculous. So you'd rip, I mean, you'd rip people's arms off. If you've ever played like Mech Warrior, you'll notice like if you hit them with enough damage, like it won't, and I don't know if Mech Warrior Online's like this or Five's like this. I know Four was like this. Like you couldn't like insta-kill people. Like even with their heads, you would have to hit it, crit it, and then hit it again 
Um, that's because you could just group everything and get a lucky shot and knock Max out. We were trying to do the same thing here. Um, the fluff in my head, like I remember Kevin and I were talking about this, and I was like, what's the fluff justification for that? And, you know, his answer was always, well, you know, there's there's just too much power draw on the fusion reactor. You know, you can't draw that much power at once for all these different weapons, so it's limited, right? And I thought that was that was kind of a good a good fluff description. So, again, ticks are limited to 5 damage base or 14 maximum damage in the case of missiles. And, again, we'll talk about this in the combat video, but missiles have variable damage, um, and you can group them up, and they'll have a very low base value, but they can potentially deal up to 14 you know points of damage on a tick but that sprays all over the mech so that's why that that maximum for missiles is higher than it would be for direct fire weapons the limit can be broken by single weapons that do massive amounts of damage right so for example like an auto cannon 20 does seven damage in in override right in destiny and override that that's what it does so that's more than five but it's okay. You can put that. I mean, it still works. It's all by itself. You can't add any weapons in that tick with the AC-20. But it's that that makes the AC-20 different than grouping a bunch of medium lasers together. And that was one of the things that we wanted to overcome in the early system that we struggled with. Um, and so what we did in the latest iteration was we added a bunch of more ticks. It was originally just six. Now you can have up to nine. And you know we 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 instituted a lower a lower limit. So things like Gauss rifles and AC-20s feel different um, than just grouping a bunch of lasers together. So that's kind of cool. All right. So we talked a little bit about the heat, right? There's a heat column. The more weapons you group together, they they sort of basically add up, and you you do more heat, right? So if if I have two medium lasers on a tick, you'll notice that's one heat. Well, if I have one medium laser on a tick, that's also one heat. That's because in this scale. The abstraction, right? You're dividing, you're rounding. Sometimes that gets lost, but that's okay. Um, at the end of the day, it all works out. So that's heat. There are also heat sinks. So let's jump back up to the top here. So you'll see heat sinks up here. Um, so if I were to, for example, to fire all of my weapons, I'd build up three heat. Two, three, four, five, minus two is three. I would jump up to here on the heat scale. Right, and we'll talk about that in the heat phase, but it's just basically that simple. Um, all right, so let me move my face out of the way here uh, for, for one quick second. Let's talk about what's going on down here. So equipment. You'll notice it says ammo, AC torso. We don't track ammo in Destiny. It's a thing we don't, that, that's um, in, in, you know, it's, it's in the rules. So in Override, we don't track ammo. Um, pretty simple. However, you can still take ammo critical hits. So if there was a torso critical, right, if you get into the structure, which we'll talk about the armor diagram in a minute, and you confirm a critical hit, you could hit the ammo. You want to know that there's ammo here. So parentheses T means torso. Um, just like up in the weapons, right, you'll see the T here, torso, right arm, left arm, right? Okay. These are other critical hit trackers. So two engine hits, the mech is destroyed. Two gyro hits, the mech basically has its speed reduced to one, falls down, can't get back up, can't jump you know, can basically just crawl around and shoot. Um, condition monitor, so the pilots can take damage. They can they can fall unconscious. They can get killed in action. That's that's very rare. Um, typically, the, the unit is destroyed, but it can happen. Um, and so, you know, that, that adds another little bit of flavor when you have your pilot fail a consciousness check on a five or a seven and they black out and they're just, <laughs> they're just sitting ducks. Uh, ah, good times, good times, good times. All right. So what else do we have here? Um, that That's our armor diagram over here on the right. This is unique in a couple of ways. One, from classic, you'll notice there's no left torso or right torso, right? Just all grouped together. That is, again, out of MechWarrior Destiny, so override follows the same pattern there. Um, we did actually modify the armor the, the way armor is calculated for the torso. It, it actually doesn't factor in the side torsos at all, as far as I remember. Um, the base rules, they, they just look at the CT, which I thought was silly because some mechs, like the Marauder is a great example, has you know tons of armor uh, in its CT and its side torsos are very, very weak. I wanted to carry that through um, without having to add side torsos back in. Um, and so we changed the math behind the scenes to, to calculate the number of pips based across you know, all of the locations, you know, changing the divisor so it wasn't like out of control. Um, but we tweaked it a few times. The other thing we did was we changed that the head armor quite a bit. 
So mechs can have four pips on the head and in, in um, Destiny they can only have three. Um, we did that because uh, for those big damage weapons like auto cannons, gauss rifles, we wanted them to be able to lop the head off. Um, and we'll talk about more more about that in the damage, um, the damage and, and combat um, video. I think that's part three. So what's the difference here between the red and the black? Well, the black is your armor, the red is your structure. You have to delete all of the pips on uh, a particular location. So if I take five damage to the left arm, I would scratch all these off. The next hit to the left arm would start going into structure. You always just transfer into the torso. It's very simple. Arms, legs, everything goes into the torso once it's destroyed. Um, and you would start marking armor and then structure just per normally. All right. The other thing we added here was was a rear armor section. That's not in Destiny, but we wanted to add a front and rear arc uh, because that's an important part of wargaming, right? Positioning and and protecting um, your your rear armor, which is you know very uh, vulnerable, especially in the case of the rifleman, which only has one pip. So if I were to hit the rifleman for three damage in the back, I would scratch this pip, and then the two would go right into the internal structure. All right. And the internal structure is inside these boxes in case you're printing in black and uh, black and white. Uh, and you don't have the the red, you can still easily see uh, what is uh, what is structure and what is not. All right, um, so that is basically that. Um, you know, the, the final thing I'll note about these cards is that we tried to put as much information as we could on them. So I'll probably cite this example again, but for example, if a unit has mask, it won't say mask down here unless you want it to. There's an option where you can show hidden equipment like partial wings, anything that like automatically adjusts the stats of a mech, we're just going to automatically adjust the stats of the mech. And that's what Alpha Strike does too. Like if you look up mechs in Alpha Strike, like the Executioner that has mask, you don't see mask in the, in the specials. It's just, it has a faster speed. And so we carry that forward here because we don't want, uh, we didn't want to have a system where, you know, you have to be looking up rules. And that's important because mask is not in Mech Warrior Destiny. Mech Warrior Destiny is a very, very, very thin set of weapons and equipment. Um, and so we had to do a lot of work to expand on that. And again, fill in that blank space and, and connect some of the dots. A um, lot of inspiration and rules as written were used right from Alpha Strike um, and ported over. So, you know, again, all, all catalyst rules and things like that, we didn't really make up stuff unless we absolutely had to, like the CT thing I just, I just mentioned where we kind of rebalanced some of the math um, to make it a little bit more playable. Um, but otherwise, this is really heavily, heavily based on pre-existing rules, and we want to keep it that way for better or for worse. All right, so that said, guys, uh, I think that's everything. That is, in fact, everything. So that's, that's, that's episode one. All right, we got, again, the six-part series this is just part one. Um, hopefully, this is something you guys really enjoy. I know we've had a lot of questions about it. We really like this system. It's a great middle ground. Still gives me that classic feel, um, but moves sort of at the speed of Alpha Strike. Um, not quite as fast, of course, but that's the trade-off, right? That's why it's a middle ground system. So, um, okay, a couple of things. Number one, Ares Games and Minis. Don't forget to support Derek, all right? Because I want to say this. It's the beginning of the year. Ares Games and Minis is the reason that in 2024, you will have no more mid real ads and by that i mean you will not be interrupted in the middle of your video by ads anymore for any new videos in 2024 because of various games and minis so show them your support go over there buy something uh get a new book get some dice get some force packs whatever you can uh aries games and minis best prices best shipping and hands down best customer service i guarantee that and and i would stand behind that i've known derek a very very long time since the beginning uh, of this channel, and uh, he, he is a really stand-up guy. So don't forget to say thanks and uh, give him some love. Um, speaking of love, don't forget to subscribe and click the like button, leave a comment, uh, and don't forget to subscribe one more time. And if you're more interested in supporting the channel or learning more about Override or getting involved, uh, you can head on over to Patreon. It's as little as a dollar a month to get in on the action. Um, so that said, guys, thank you so much for watching. Keep your eyes out for other tutorial videos. They will be coming very, very soon. And of course, stay tuned. Always great stuff coming from Death From Above Wargaming. Have a good night.